We're a little bit late, but we've got some more great stuff coming to, tonight, coming to you tonight. Got Sam Manning, the computer. Say hello, Sam. And of course, we have Ron... Oh my goodness, it's happened again. Ronald. Roland. I've said your name like hundreds of times. Over the past 10 minutes, I keep forgetting it. It's horrible. I'm a horrible human being. Anyway, Roland, I'm sorry. We have Roland manning the camera. And this is great, we got three feeds, got a piece of 16 mil square in the far, and we're gonna be making a door handle to finish off the month long series of kind of wall mounted, horizontal mounting stuff. And I really hope that you guys are gonna enjoy this. It's, uh, it's gonna be pretty fun. You can see we got another feed set up. Should we take a hot piece out of the fire? Are you guys all ready? Do we have any comments coming through? Hey, we got some great people on YouTube, 21 of you on YouTube. Great to see you guys. Remember guys, you can ask your questions. Use those comment features. Please do, use the hell out of them. We want this to be a lot about communication, a lot about interaction. And of course, please, it would mean the world if you're enjoying it at a particular moment. Please go ahead and share this with your friends. Share this with those friends of yours that you think this would mean something to. I'd really appreciate it. If you're part of any blacksmithing groups on Facebook, go ahead and share it there. Let's really try and reach as many people with this stuff. Okay, you all ready? Facebook, all good on Facebook? Great. Okay, let's start. So basically, now I want to give myself an idea of how much material I'm going to take. So, yeah, you know. I'm probably gonna stop right about there and I'm gonna give myself a little mark just like that. So I've got something tactile to work through. Then I'm gonna take a cube over this far edge and just isolate that. And take another heat. Brilliant, what's going on on Facebook, guys? Dustin, it is great to see you again. Thank you so much, you've been here on every single one. I really, really appreciate your support and your viewership, that is fantastic. Thank you so much, Dustin. Okay. It's exciting stuff, guys. So of course, you know, a little bit of context as to what's going on. I know a lot of people are curious about equipment using a gas forge, so this is powered by propane, running off on a mal. Uh, long Venturi gas uh, injector, whatever you call it. And, uh, and you know, it's keeping that forge pretty hot. You know, heats the steel up pretty fast. Here are the anvil. We have a 51 kilogram Brooks anvil, um, which is, you know, certainly a, a, a very nice anvil to work on. You know, the edges do tend to fracture quite easily. This one has welded up edges. And of course, right now, I'm just swinging a three and a half pound um, rounding hammer, little square circle rounding hammer that I make, and, uh, and that's about it. It's then gonna be an assortment of hand tools that's gonna go into making the rest of this. So, I'm now gonna judge by this, judge about kinda halfway or so, and then kinda just switch to my flat, and gently lead in a taper, and then get a little more aggressive with that round side of the hammer here, and reduce that material a little bit more. You know, I kinda wanna make a relatively large door handle, get any of that rhombus out of there. There we go. And of course, as I come up to that shoulder, I go ahead and stop hitting all four sides because there's no way I can do that hammer on shoulder blow um, with any kind of accuracy, or certainly no power. Okay, planish that all up. You know, using the flat die for planishing while kind of trying to remain relatively aggressive with it. And the way we do that, obviously, is by being over that far edge of the amble, that reduced surface area contact really helps us out a lot. Ah, what fun. Trig, it is great to see you. Trig is the gentleman that I gave a forge to, the young gentleman I gave a forge to um, just the other day. You might have seen that if you've subscribed to my YouTube channel. Hey, by the way, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, like, go do that. Trust me, it's a good idea. Nick Flaherty, yes. I apologize for skipping over, over it. Um, these little series, I think that each month, I want to have a theme. And so one of the questions that I'm going to be asking you guys tonight, rather than necessarily what to make next week, I want to ask you guys what you think the theme 
of next month should be. This month it has been, you know, kind of your, your vertical mounting stuff. Your, your, you know, as you can see, we've got candle holders, door knockers, hooks, hooks, and now, you know, a door pull, this kind of stuff, it's all kind of vertically mounting, you know, what next? Uh, you know, you guys let me know. What do you think it might be? I want to hear your suggestions. Sebastian, it's great to see you from Suffolk. Fantastic. Ramon saint cric What steel do I usually use? Now, I apologize if I completely bastardized your name. That might well be the case. I tried my best to, uh, to sound as continental as possible. Uh, the steel that I use depends on the application um, for the certain task at hand. If I just want to make something pretty, I'll go ahead and take a stick of mild steel. Um, if I want to make something like really pretty, I'll go ahead and take copper or like silver or I'll make Damascus. But if I'm wanting to make tools, uh, here we go, should we throw this Damascus? Do you want to show it? I think that's a kind of a good opportunity as any. Should we go ahead and come right in there? Do you want to zoom in? Yeah, there we go. So you guys might have seen a couple of streams ago, we showed you Sam's uh, nailing on hammer before having handled it. Well, Sam is the proud owner of a fully finished uh, hammer. How long has that been? Like 10 months since we started it? I think it was about 10 months ago we started it. You know, I like to really keep on track of things and uh, stay ahead of the game. It's always very sensible. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm just gonna get and clean this up a little bit. Yeah, so what's going on guys? What have you all been up to this week? Have you been in the shop? And you know, what are your plans for the weekend? If you haven't been in the shop this week, going into the shop in the weekend, what are you gonna make? What are you gonna do? Let's, uh, let's find out, let's find out. Let's start a conversation. Go ahead and hit the diagonals a little bit. Give that another little brush. So there's my first half. I'm now going to go ahead and uh, come to the near side of the anvil, get a reverse taper going on, and do the other half. And uh, of course, this door handle, you know, a lot of the stuff I make, well, actually, I should first give a little context as to how this project came about. Um, we've had some pretty serious technical issues starting today's show, hence being late. Guys, I'm really sorry. You know, it is what it is. Hence being late, we had some serious technical issues trying to get this stuff to work out. It's worked, you know, had some new equipment that just needed some dialing in. And, uh, and so we weren't able to really focus a lot on planning something. So this is a door pull that, you know, what, like 10 minutes ago, we thought about how are we gonna do this? And, uh, and this is gonna be very much inspired from door pulls I do Brian Brazil do. And then I wanna add some punch work. You know, it's nice to experiment with uh, you know, some of the more creative sides of things. I want to add some punch work to it, very much in the style of what I've seen Jacob Farham do. Um, and that's the plan. We're going to see how this goes. I'm still waiting for these guys to sponsor me. We'll see how that goes. Um, <laughs> for now, however, let's go ahead. Ah, oh, it's not hot. I'm getting too excited. Let's, let's read some Facebook comments. Joel Garcia, it is great to see you. Daniel Pierce from Bonnie, Scotland. Fantastic to see you. Michael Stairs, great to see you. Fantastic. Who's trying to make thongs? Joel Garcia, you're trying to make thongs? From steel? That's, that's kind of interesting. Maybe a little painful. Oh, here's, like, let's, let's zoom in on this. This is a great thing to show. So this, uh, this is a tongue clip and Really, it's not a tongue clip right now. It's better once you do this. I really <laughs> was thrilled when I saw this tongue clip idea, the tongue clip design. I have you know, no clue where it originates. You know, a lot of these things certainly don't originate where one has found them. Um, but I first saw this on Ed Brazil's tongue rack. Uh, it's simply a piece of square tubing, flattened. And then you get two sizes of tongue clip. You get a tongue clip this way and that way, and a tongue clip this way and that way. What you can also do is you can put it on your tongs that way and then tilt it over and really get a nice tight grip. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and use this. You know, it's nice, it's light, and the best thing is this is like super easy to make. How long did that take you to make, Roland? Three minutes. Three minutes. So that's great, that's what you want in a tongue clip. 
<laughs> yeah, like X. <laughs> Okie dokie. Let's come over to that near side. So again, you know, I made that mark a little while earlier. That gives me a kind of tactile area to feel on. So let's feel for it. Okay, I've got plenty of room. I'm going to go ahead and do that with that shoulder up, which is something that I'll certainly do very rarely. Shoulder down, I should say. Okay, let's take another heat. Okay, let's see what's going on on YouTube, guys. Let's see if I can load this up into another screen. Pop out. Brilliant. No, I do not want to do any updates now. Thank you very much, Mr. Macintosh. Remind me tomorrow. Ben, great to see you. Thank you so much. Really enjoying, really liking the fact that you're enjoying the content that we've been putting out. Kim Betts, building a shop to work in. What an exciting, exciting time that must be. What are you waving that at me, Sam? Okay, Daniel Mosler has asked a good question on YouTube. He's asked me what I think is better, a steel stand or a wooden stand. Um, I'm, I, I don't have a romanticism over... Uh, it's not like a romanticism that I prefer steel over wood. What it is more so is that I just want my anvil to be as immovable as possible and give me much return to the, at, to the hammer blow as possible. I also want to be able to get in close. And I also like the idea of being able to have it immovable, yet relatively portable. Because, um, you know, ain't the damn forklifts around here uh, in the workshop. So I want to kind of, you know, if I want to move my anvil, I want to be able to move it myself. Based on those things, I like a steel stand the best. For the reason that I can get right in close to the anvil without there being a big stump. And I can very easily bolt the anvil to the steel stand. And I can very easily bolt the steel stand to the ground, or in this case, stake it to the earth. And so that's why I like a steel stand, specifically a tripod stand with the legs at certainly not more than like a 10 degree angle, you know, so you're really getting as much return from your work as possible. Steel stand is also much lighter. Wooden stand, very difficult to mount to your concrete, you know. Um, I do like the steel stand, it's my personal preference. Uh, and I think, I would like to believe that it stands with some sort of rationality, the fact that it's my personal preference. Uh, that would at least be the hope, the dream, and the aspiration. Hey, Lewis, I'm, uh, I'm pleased to have you here. I'm sorry that you missed the start of the stream. It's okay, we actually ended up starting about 25 minutes late due to some technical issues. It's great to have you here, though. Hey Joey, great to see you. Yeah, the top camera is a, uh, a, a, a GoPro up there. And I, sadly, I think it's a little... Hello. <laughs> sadly, we can't quite like zoom in on it. I'd have to get on the phone and change, change it a little bit. But um, we're on the medium setting now. But I think that's a fun shot. You know, we'll play around, we'll move it around each week. We'll see what happens. Okay, let's do a little more. Now that I've roughed it out, I'm going to go ahead and have a look at it. Give it a little straighten to kind of get rid of any optical illusions. And before I do too much planishing, I want to see if there's any kind of serious amount of metal moving I've got to do to make it even. Uh, I can see that I do need to come back in here and move that center down a little bit to account for the fact that when I planish, that is going to extend. So I'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, you know, I can give it a little brush to spending a lot of time talking kind of oxidizes a little more while that's in the forge. Brilliant. John Ingram, we are making a door pole today. Another kind of thing to finish off the, the wall mounted, door mounted, you know, kind of vertical mounted 
uh, series of the month. Next month, of course, guys, this is, I really want your opinion, your help, your advice, and your thoughts on what the theme for, I don't know, I mean, should we be pretentious and call it season two? I don't know, is that being pretentious or is that just being realistic? Season two of, uh, of the show, I kind of want to, you know, have, a, have each month have a different theme, have a different idea, have a different kind of uh, topic and see how that goes. So I'm taking your suggestions. Rather than what exactly to make next week at the start of the month, what should the overall theme be for the entire month? Love to take your suggestions and, and find out what it is that you guys would appreciate to see. Okay. Let's go ahead and blend. Add planish. I think of anvil to hammer ratio. Um, is that Trig that asked that? It's Elijah. Elijah. Uh, what, b basically, here's the thing. Um, what? I, you know, you, you could take a 400 pound anvil and a three and a half pound hammer, and you could walk that anvil all the way around the shop if you didn't have a proper mount. If it wasn't properly mounted to its stand, and the stand was not properly mounted to the concrete. Just a three and a half pound hammer and a 400 pound anvil, you would move that thing all the way around. Um, the key, in my opinion, is to make sure that you have a solid mount. The size of the anvil is not so critical. What is so critical is the avoidance of the loss of energy, making sure you get as much back to the hammer as possible. That's the kind of most important thing. Um, you know, like what is this? This is a 110 pound anvil and a, and a three and a half pound hammer. I don't know what that ratio adds up to. Uh, certainly not with the amount of kind of, oh. What does that ratio add up to? Probably a little under, I don't know. I'm not even gonna try and, it's just gonna embarrass myself. I can't do math. Okay, I want a little more length right there. Clean it up and take off the diagonals. Sorry. Thank God I uh, I didn't say it was right on the money. I would embarrass myself. That's thirty one. Um. Yeah, you know, and this anvil is perfectly fine. I've swung a seven pound hand hammer on it, you know, making drifts out of inch and a quarter um, alloy steel without too much of an issue. And I can say that I have a 670 pound anvil in there and I much prefer working on this. You know, anvil weight, I'm not so much of a proponent for having a hugely heavy anvil. I'm more of a proponent for having good surfaces on your anvil and, uh, and for making sure that you've got a good mount, you know, or nice and stout. Avoid it walking around, avoid, you know, avoid the vibrations. Ronald Wick Wickland suggesting traditional joinery. So great suggestion. Tong making from Sebastian, great suggestion. Let's go, let's go to YouTube. What are you guys doing on YouTube? Decorative hinges. Joshua, great suggestion. Animals and nature working with our Nath, great to see you. Fantastic suggestion. Great, 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 great. Okay. So, yeah, what am I gonna what am I gonna do this piece right now? I think I'm gonna work on that. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna work on. Just talking to myself real quick. Let's get a little more heat in there.
So I'm flattening out that pad. And it's got a little bit of crud on there, a little bit of crap from the forge. All the scale and kind of refractory brick kind of builds up there. I'm going to create a little kind of hexagonal pad, if I can. So Roland, who is manning the camera, say hello, you can wave in front of the camera. Oh, he didn't quite get there. He is from not Slovenia, as I've said uh, before, sadly and embarrassingly, I apologize. <laughs> uh, but from Slovakia, and we've just finished up day three, day four, of his four day class. It's been fantastic, we've got a nice big stack of tools uh, that you're gonna leave with and some I like to think some, some fun knowledge. He did incredibly at, uh, at picking up the hand forging techniques. And if any of you guys have been checking out the YouTube videos that we put out about his class, you'll really see that. I've been like super impressed with that. Nobody's picked up the hand work, like the leaves and stuff like that, and the bottle openers the, the same way you did. You did fantastically on that. And, uh, and yeah, so in one day, you get to go from swinging sledgehammers and hand hammers and all sorts of fun things like that to manning a camera, right? You know, what a, <laughs> what a fast career change. Yeah, look at that. That's no good. I want to grab that off of there. I'm going to grab a file. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm kind of looking at here is I've got a little bit of impurities from the forge, you know? As, as you use a gas forge, it seems to be, or at least in my experience, the scale, every time you put the piece of steel in the fire, the scale kind of jumps off it as it, uh, as it reacts to the heat change, jumps off the steel, lands and kind of forms a puddle. And then that kind of mixes with the yeah, slight layer of refractory that eventually breaks down and kind of melts. And then eventually you get a little bit of like a sticky goo that'll sometimes forge that'll sometimes form up when your forge is hot. That certainly seems to be what happens with mine. I don't know if that's a, just the case of the refractory bricks that I'm using. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. Josh Myers, uh, you want me to discuss the pros and cons of the blacksmith's guillotine as opposed to the top and bottom fullers. Blacksmith's guillotine is uh, not a Louis XIV invention, it is just simply <laughs> two sliding, well, uh, uh, two dies that can be interchangeable and it's in a plate, oh, I've got a little moth on me, and it's in a plate, <laughs> and it's like in a, in, a, in a fixture so that they slide up and down and you don't have to do any holding. Sorry moth, I just threw it on the ground by accident. The advantage of the blacksmith's guillotine is you do not have to hold the tools, you simply put your steel in there and you go for it. That's great because you don't need to have any help. Uh, it's limited in the sense that you could only use your hand hammer um, and that's a problem and you can only hit straight down, that's a problem. But it's all you can do if you have just a hand hammer. Blacksmith's guillotine, great. Only have a hand hammer, great. S working with a striker, now that is a great option if you want to have more flexibility with what you're doing. If you want to be able to get in there with your fuller at weird angles all the way around and if you want to be able to put odd shaped pieces and get in there with the fuller. Basically it's not like I can't say there's like an answer as to which is better. They're suited to different solutions. If you know, you're know you doing hand work, use a guillotine. If you're trying to work large stock and you want to get in at all sorts of odd angles, use the striker and your top and bottom fullers. All right. Tongs are running into the ground here, so this is lucky that that's just about finishing up right there. Lovely. Break it down a little more. And I'm pleased with how that's looking. Lovely. 
So, now a little straightening here. I can now move on to flattening all of this and then eventually working on punching the details in here. Exciting stuff. What's going on Facebook? How are you all doing? Brian Pellerin, it's great to see you. Watching from Nova Scotia, outstanding. Great to see you, Hugh. Okay. You can see I've been flattening that on the diagonal because that leaves these beautiful facets, these beautiful facets that add a, I would, I would argue, a large amount of aesthetic appeal uh, that we might otherwise not be able to get. And that's just going to add a little bit of interest, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more fun into the workpiece. Jared is here from Guam. Great to see you, Jared. Okay. I want that to be wide enough to be able to get in there with my uh, with my farm fullers. Beautiful. A little bit of straightening here, a little bit of straightening there. Fantastic. Lovely. So now I'm going to begin to lay out my punch work. I want to be able to hold that in my legs without having to have these tongs. So I'm going to pull them off and now I'm going to go ahead and cool that piece down in the pail of water. Old James, I'm thrilled to hear that you're liking all of the different camera angles. That's awesome, that's what we want to hear. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and throw a glove on on this case, and I'm going to take some tools that, uh, that Jacob Farm showed me, and that I've really only seen Jacob Farm use. They're quite interesting. Have a look. If we go ahead and zoom in real close, you're going to see these. Um, Jacob very modestly kind of found it difficult for t to accept me calling them these, but I like to call them the Farm Fullers. You know, everybody's got to have a little bit of vanity here and then, as as, as much as he hated to. Uh, as much as he hated to hear, but you know, they're very interesting. It's almost like a sphere that has been cut in half and kind of shaved off. And it's almost like, you know, like the end of your finger and you can push down in the steel. And it's like a butcher in one orientation. And then it's like a fuller, a ball fuller in two others. Very interesting tools and a lot of creative opportunities present themselves with these things. So I'm excited to do a little more playing, a little more experimentation, working on some of the stuff that I've seen uh, that I've seen Jacob work on, and uh, and, and see how I can 
develop that for myself. I mean, that's one of the wonderful things about forging. You know, I want to leave about a cube of material. I'm going to take that width, which is 25, and half that. Awesome. Just to give myself a rough little mark there. And of course, you know, I'm using low temperatures. to lay out the steel. Oh, I've lost my old mark. No, I haven't. Hopefully squaring it up as I go. He says. Okay. Now, Take another heat, forge it a little deeper, and move on to the next little, next little spot. Yeah, these are fantastic tools. And uh, yeah, no, I mean, Jacobs, he's, he's got a crazy design sense. It's amazing. Always very inspired when I see his design work. Andy Bimba on YouTube, uh, did I bio-build my propane burner? I've only ever bought propane burners just because, like, I'm no propane matician, propane propaneologist, propanetist. Basically, I don't want to mess with, with that stuff and not have it work right. Propane tends to, tends to do this thing, like, where it makes fire and very loud noises. Um, that like burn, so I've always, always burnt, I've always bought the burners, you know, just so I have a little more faith in that, so I'm not messing around with this stuff. Um, so I've only ever bought them, and that's kind of what I'd recommend people do, you know, unless you've got a background and you know exactly what you're doing, you know, just go ahead and buy the damn things. They're cheap as can be. You can buy a great propane burner for like $100. Uh, that is certainly worth the peace of mind of knowing that you're most likely not going to blow yourself up on your first expedition and foiree into the craft of uh, into the craft of blacksmithing in your back garden or wherever it may be. So I'm just kind of working three, three main facets on this. One in the middle, one in the left, one in the right. What fun. And then now I'm gonna use this other one. And I'm gonna try and mark out, I'm gonna try and mark out a little box with it. We're gonna see how that goes. And in fact, I'm a little worried that I might not quite have the space. We're gonna give it a little test, however. Uh, it might be a little bit on the large side. How large is my touch mark? Because that's what I wanna go inside. If I lay that out with a tiny little touch, will that? Will that allow me to, uh, to do it? Let's find out, let's have a go. So guys, if you haven't shared this stream, please do. I would sincerely appreciate it. More eyes we get, oh, the better, oh, the better. Okay, so I'm always gonna be able to deepen that up. Now, let's see if I can box it in. So if I go one right there. Then move it over. What's going on, Sam? Drop the tool. Ah. This is really working for some of the stuff I saw Jacob do when he was here at my shop uh, about 11 months or so ago. And we did some collaboration hammers. And you know, when, when I saw him do this incredible punch work, I thought to myself, ah, man, I've really got to try some of this stuff once he leaves. Uh, I, I didn't really get around to it, you know. 
I'm sure many of you know the feeling of starting on a project, starting on the, on the idea of starting with something and not really getting around to, uh, to changing a whole lot. Brian Q. Rosales, great to see you, that you're here from Texas. Mike Thompson, you don't have to be so worried about burning yourself, it's all right. Um, you know, you'll probably burn yourself once a day, but there's just like small, tiny little burns, you know, like sparks and stuff like that, which really are quite inconsequential. Um, and they kind of hurt for a little bit, you grit your teeth and you keep on working and you have a whole lot of fun. Guarantee you, the fun far outweighs the pain. Fun of blacksmithing is quite incredible. Uh, Michael Stairs, Stars, apologize if again I've made a, made, a, made, a, made a mockery of your last name. I apologize if I mispronounced it, just like anybody. Uh, I didn't get my touch mark from anywhere. This is actually a very, very simple uh, touch mark. It's just an S and um, I made it by filing with a chainsaw file on a rectangular punch. It uh, doesn't get much simpler than that. Now, if you had a much more complex design, I'd go ahead and, yeah, you know, just uh, get it made by a punch, punch company. You know, there are companies all over the world that will make punches and that's like their business. That's what they do. So, you know, make the most of them. Okay, let's forge that a little deeper. that over a little bit. Another one of the courses that I've been uh, working on lately that I managed to capture some fantastic footage of while I was in the US is a course that, uh, that involves Jacob doing his thing, really rocking and rolling with these incredible techniques that he has kind of, you know, developed to create aesthetic appeal and interest in his work, you know? Like, it's so simple. You can see I got my touch mark off a little bit. But what a simple kind of design um, design you're able to implement with these, like I say, I think we need to use the word far and fuller. I think like, you know, give him some credit because I've not seen anybody else um, use that particular tool in such a way. And I think it certainly is quite effective. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and work right up here. And I don't know why I was about to go to the fire because I actually, I wanna go ahead and use the temperature we have right now to lay out my hole. And I'm gonna do the hole with like a bob punch. Um, oh, that piece of steel is very hot um, in a rather sensitive place. Get rid of that scale on the anvil. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this some pin pricks, try and line up my hole. Again, you know, I've explained before that I like to do my hole layouts while it's cold. And hey guys, before I finish my sentence, have you shared this stream in your favorite blacksmithing groups? Go ahead and do that. That'd be awesome. I've explained that, you know, I like to kind of lay out my holes at lower temperatures, lay out my cuts at lower temperatures. I don't have incandescence of the material to deal with. I don't have, um, I don't have the excess heat coming off and burning my hands. It also means that I have as much time as I want. I like to make the most of the temperatures that you know, natural process of forging gives us. We heat a piece of steel up. One of the realities of heating a piece of steel up is it will indeed cool down. So why don't we make the most of the time that it's hot and make the most of the time that it's cold? Here's the thing, the time that it's hot, much smaller in comparison to the time that it's cold. So if we can make the most of the hot times where the steel is most malleable, where the steel is gonna move the most, where we're gonna do the most work, I think that is always going to be a benefit. Uh, and if, of course, if we make the most of the cold times, that's a benefit too, you know, like, you know, play the cards you're given at any moment in time and play them as best you can. It's always going to be a much better option. Okay, now that's a little deeper. I don't want to do it too deep. This needs to be a progressive thing. I'm now going to come in here 
with the farm full up, but which way am I going to go? You know, I think I quite want to go this way. Do I want to go that way? Let's see if that works. Yeah, I think it'll work. Again, all experimentation. Uh, Sam, how long ago did I work out what I was going to make? Or have I even worked out what I was going to make already? I don't know. Five to ten. <laughs> Five to ten. Yeah, not that long ago. Right, let's see how this comes out. Let's see if this is an abomination or if this actually has any kind of aesthetic appeal. It's very exciting doing these live streams. The, uh, the spontaneity that, that, that comes about with you know, setting up all the technical... <laughs> that is really hot. I'm going to cool that off before I finish my sentence. Um, you know, the, the, the spontaneity that comes with the process of you know, setting up all the technical stuff, teaching a class during the day, as Roland and I, you know, like we, we have day four of our class, teaching a class during the day, we don't get the opportunity to really think too much about what's going to go on in the class, in the, in the live stream. Um, so yeah, you know, right around comes about 9.50, we've got 10 minutes till we start the live stream, we're like, okay, you know, so what are we going to make? Make a door pull, inspired by Jacob Farm, and that's the fun of it all. Very, uh, very off the cuff, and I like that. I, uh, you know, I like that, I don't get the opportunity to do things like that uh, too often. And I think that this kind of time pressure is certainly something that I would like to think is interesting to you as the audience, as the viewer, my, my dearly beloved, uh, fantastic viewer, but it, also a great learning opportunity for me as I get to kind of push my skills a little bit and, and see, okay, while I'm talking, while I'm trying to be a little bit uh, more on the entertaining side than normal and while I'm explaining what's going on, um, I need to try and not make mistakes. I need to try and make something that's actually interesting. That's a pressure that, uh, that I don't quite get to uh, experience too often and that's something that I appreciate. Aaron with Withrow, when am I coming back to the United States? Uh, I don't know, it depends, depends when you guys need me out there. Okay, so line this bad boy up. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and forge these a little bit deeper. Okay, it's getting a little bit cold. Let's go ahead and heat that bad boy up. And let's go ahead and check what's going on on YouTube. How are you guys doing? Uh, Kieran Wellis, what would I recommend as a first project with somebody starting out? I think that the first project um, kind of depends on where your angle is, what you're trying to do, if you're just trying to have some fun. First project, a little small J hook. That's how you get like the fastest uh, the fastest gratification possible in this craft, making a small J hook from six millimeter round stock. And uh, like when I do like a beginner taster class or in my uh, beginner blacksmithing online course, how to start blacksmithing, that is uh, the first thing I kind of show is doing that little small J hook. Um, it's super simple, super fun. And the steel for it costs like 10 cents. So, you know, it's, 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 it's just a win all around. Fantastic learning opportunity too. Uh, I certainly think that if you were to take a 20 foot bar of six millimeter round, which, you know, quarter inch round, and make those out of it, um, you know, by the end of those hundred or so, <laughs> end of those hundred or so hooks, you would actually certainly become quite proficient at making tapers and you know, bending over the horn and things like that. And it would help the rest of your forging journey to no end. Um, sadly, you know, when we're doing blacksmithing as a hobby, for example, if that's what one is doing, it's, I totally appreciate it. it's difficult to, to want to set oneself the task of, you know, making a hundred or something just like that. I appreciate that, totally understand it. You know, that's a lot less interesting and if one is doing this as a hobby to, you know, have fun and, you know, you worked hard in the week, whatever. Yeah, you don't necessarily want to do that. But 
that repetition, that kind of that that that, that repetition and getting it into the muscle memory helps other projects to no end, certainly. Josh Myers, love your idea for season two. Wearables, belt buckle, bracelet, annular brooch, love it. Frank, great to see that you're viewing from Belgium. I'm thrilled. We have people from all around the world. Outstanding. Chris, great to see that you're here from Winnipeg. Thrilled to have you guys here. Okay, let's go ahead and dry this a little more. And a little brush. And go a little deeper right here. Fantastic. What fun this experimental creative process is. Get right in there. And begin the final punch hole. How many of you guys have, uh, have gone ahead and seen our intro? If you didn't catch this, this is the one that we ran last week. This will also give you an opportunity to kind of run and, uh, and go ahead and you know, grab a drink of water or something like that. We're gonna run our intro just to show you because this is something that Sam filmed last week and we're just like, it's kind of awesome. Should we go ahead and show them that? How do you guys like that? That's pretty sick, right? That's crazy. Yeah, it's all good, you can come through. Say hello. Hey, it's all good, you can, you can walk right through. Thanks, dude, I really appreciate it. All right, thank you so much. I'm, I'm tied in to the microphone, um, so I can't, I can't go and get my own damn water like a, like a normal person, so thank you, Roland, I really appreciate that. I also can't drink it without spilling half a cup of this. If any of you have come and taken a class here at the workshop, um, every single one of you has commented about the fact that I cannot drink a glass or a mug of water without spilling half of it on the ground and uh, at least a quarter of it on myself. I need to steady myself here. Okay, we're good. I only spilt about a third of it, so that's a, that's a positive thing, certainly. Even more sound. Next month, they're coming off. Okay, so I'm now just taking a small punch and driving that down until I reach the anvil. Until it cools off. Then, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. Lay this in my wooden block and punch right there. And that punches a, punches a little plug. And so the reason that I ball punched first, because this means I now have a countersunk hole in there. Um, this is the exact way that Leatherman recommends that you use your Leatherman, um, just in case you weren't curious. They really recommend that you poke it at hot steel. Uh, that's exactly what you need to do. You can see that little plug right there. Um, that's what just came out and we have this countersunk hole so that we can indeed take a screw and have it stay countersunk, stay a little bit more out of the way and that's a way that you can do it and forge it to finish. Where did I put that wooden block? I need to give it another hit. Did 
lovely. So, now what we're gonna go ahead and do is cut this off, leaving about a cube of material, and we're gonna turn it around, hold this in tongs, and forge this pad on the other end before making our bends for the finished door handle pull. So, for this, am I gonna be able to fit that in the fire? I'm gonna go have to, I'm gonna go have to, I'm gonna go ahead and have to move this brick and come in there. Lovely. Exciting stuff. How's YouTube doing? How are you guys doing on YouTube? Lars Mermans on YouTube is asking about what steel I use for my hammer eye drifts. Uh, well, for the hammer eye drifts, it depends. Um, certainly, because of the fact that with the hammer eye drift, it's heating up to a high temperature and having a large amount of pressure exerted upon it, we do not want to use mild steel. Um, we also don't want to just use straight carbon steels. In my experience, and I imagine that the data would also follow with this, a plain carbon steel without any other alloying components tends not to quite have the same heat resistance um, as we go up that kind of temperature scale. So for a drift working with a striker, I would recommend any mid-carbon alloy steel like 4140, which is EN19, 4340, EN24, uh, um, or you know, coil spring, which is 5160, EN47 here in the United Kingdom. I'd recommend these, and I'd recommend these over a steel that's designed to take the high temperatures for the reason that the people I'm recommending this to are the, are the, 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 the people that I am. And you know, if you're taking a piece of steel and you're trying to forge a drift, with a hand hammer, you do not want to take a piece of H13. That's an absurd type of material to try and move with a hand hammer. You don't want to be messing around with that. Sam is looking at me with, with eyes of like tearful, tearful, <laughs> tearfully remembering his experiences of trying to forge H13 into punches and drifts. Did they make you do that at Farrier College? Yeah. They make you do it on mild steel first so yep. you don't waste it. Are they? <laughs> That's funny. H13 PTSD. Hey, Billy Nagel, great to hear your comment. Billy Nagel is asking me, um, he's aware that I heat treat some of my tools, but I also don't heat treat a lot of my tools. Um, the tools that I will heat treat are the tools that I'm gonna use um, to be striking things at colder temperatures. For example, most of my hand tools, they are heat treated. This is so that they have a greater toughness when I take a piece of steel at the lower temperatures of you've seen me do as you've seen me do many times right now and lay it out with the small taps and then progressively harder hit. If it was left as forged it would not be able to withstand that. However, if for example I'm going to talk about a hot cut hardy here which is going to be cutting hot steel. Um, hot steel is hot. Hot steel will destroy the temper of your tools. This is going to cut hot steel. There's no point heat treating it because you're going to lose the temper anyway. And on your hot cut harder, you've got that bad boy in the anvil. This is not the right sized anvil for it. You've got that thing in the anvil and you're all cutting away on your piece of steel. And this is not me trying to make a caricature. This is me. I have done this many times, as embarrassed as I am to say. You're cutting away on your piece of steel, feeling mighty confident about how fast you're cutting it because it's an amazing brown Brazil hot cut hardy. You're cutting away. It's moving fast and you hit, the piece flies across the room because you're an idiot and you didn't control your blow. <clears throat> that's me, that's me, that's me. I've done that too many times than I care to admit, and it's stupid. And every single time I say to myself, you know what, Alec G, you might as well get better at this. But you miss, you hit your anvil into the hot cut edge. It is sincerely uh, preferable, greatly preferable, that you damage the hot cut edge rather than the hammer. And if it was hardened, it would damage both the hot cut edge and the hammer. You know, so it's like rather damage just one than both. It's a lot easier to grind the hot cut than it is to grind the hammer. And if this was hard and you were to hit it, you would risk not only having it like bend over, but also having that edge kind of shatter and, uh, and start moving at a very high velocity and potentially, you know, puncturing you uh, less than ideal, certainly. Right, this is hot. 
Uh, it's been hot for a while. You know, when something's been hot for a while, I like to go ahead and brush it, get as much of the heavy scale off. Now I'll go to my hot cut hardy, which I cleverly do not have in the right place. We're just gonna be right over here, Roland. And I'm gonna take about a cube of material. I'm gonna do that cut all the way around. As I come around on that fourth side, I line up my cuts, nice. I like to cut with the round side of the hammer. It's a better user experience and saves kind of overly bending the material. Something that I've explained before. There we go. There's our piece of steel. Now that's an example of a much more responsible um, cutting approach. You'll see that it's held onto the bar. I can easily control it and keep it nice and neat. So you can see, here's what we're looking at so far. We're gonna do this down there, and then we're gonna be able to put our bends in it, and uh, it's all certainly very exciting. And see, I've got a little bit of a twist there that I don't quite like. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank that a little closed. Fantastic. Oh, no, I cannot pick that up with my hands. It's been a long day. I'm starting to pick hot pieces of steel up with my hands. That's no good. Where's the hammer? Right there. So how many of you guys have been following the videos that I've been putting out last week and this week? I would love to hear what you think. I would love to hear what you think I can improve on kind of video-wise. I'm really trying my best to produce the best content I can. If you're not aware of what I'm talking about, head over to my YouTube page and go ahead and subscribe. Please subscribe. I'd sincerely, sincerely, sincerely appreciate it. We're about to hit a milestone of 10,000 subscribers, which is like unbelievable. Um, and and I, wanna, I wanna really race through that line so we can power on to the next milestone. So go ahead and run to the YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe there for some more forging content. Okay, let's go ahead and add a YouTube link. I love the suggestion. I'm gonna do that right now, Daniel. Boom, boom, user, Alec, the blacksmith. All, copy, right in there. There we go. I posted it like three times, you cannot miss it. That is the, I, <laughs> I've tangled myself up. Let me see if I can get out of this, 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 this little uh, situation right there. So where's a tong clip? I'm gonna need a tong clip for this. A little bit safer. Roland, what was the best thing that you learned this week while you were here? Hard to say. We made all the stuff. But I have to say that the small stuff like leaves, water openers, force heads. Say it say it a little louder. Do you want to show off your rounding hammer real quick? I can. Do you want to go ahead and bring it? It's, he, he made a nice rounding hammer. He picked up that sledge. Apart from a couple of mishits here and there, now he's out of the room, I can go ahead and mention them. Apart from a couple of mishits here and there, um, he picked that sledge up nice and high right away. Nice and confidently. Yes, yes, let's have a look at that. Have a look at that beauty. What an incredible first hammer to be able to make. That thing is nice. Very nice. Here you go. Sam is holding his nailing on hammer with, 
<laughs> Please don't accidentally drop it on my laptop. Hello! You, you put a shop on this thing, yeah? Sorry? You put the shop on yeah. this thing, yeah? How you doing, Ross? Hey, Billy Nagel, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that you wish Norwich was closer to Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, we live in a small world now. That's like a freaking nine hour plane journey. Come on down, we'd love to have you. Basically, I'm trying to recall from memory what kind of size I had this at before I began my detail punching. Really, I should kind of start kind of moving on with it, accepting how it goes in the interests of relative expediency. Of course, boom, boom, last one, right there. Okay, you know, what am I talking about? I need to lay that hole out. How are you guys liking that GoPro? I think that thing is sick, that's, that's awesome. I've been having a lot of fun with that this week. Again, guys, more reason to use for you to go subscribe to that YouTube channel. Link is a couple comments up if you're on Facebook. Uh, we got some crazy shots with that GoPro this week. I think you're really gonna enjoy that. Uh, sadly, GoPros do not quite taste very nice. If you have seen any of the footage, you'll understand why it is that I'm saying that. Withrow, I'm so pleased that this is inspiring you. Uh, I mean, I, that's, that's what this is all about. It's about kind of giving people motivation to go and forge themselves and have a lot of fun and gain the enjoyment from the creative process and gain the wonderful lessons that failing at the creative process teaches and like, you know, being able to interact with other people in this community who are always so wonderfully kind and helpful. That's what this is all about. And I'm just thrilled that you are enjoying this. <laughs> Dustin, uh, Dustin Bolgren has commented on the fact that yes, we went through quite a few tool handles in this class. <laughs> we got some great footage of that. that, that's awesome. Matt Warner, have I ever used a coal forge or do I just use gas? Well, oh, I thought that'd be funny. <laughs> it made a fun noise. Uh, well, originally I always used coke. Coal Forging in coal isn't very common here in the United Kingdom, so I use coke forges. Uh, and yeah, it's perfectly fine to work in a coke forge, but in a coke forge, I could not do this yak yak. I'd only be able to do the whack whack and concentrate on the forging. And you know, the yak yak's important to me too. It's about interaction, it's about, you know, communicating, and the yak yak, the talking, the communication is very important when I'm doing the classes, which is most of what I'm doing now and being able to put the piece of steel in the fire and talk about what's gonna be able to happen next week, next heat, talk about what happened last heat, talk about these things is incredibly important and is why I like the propane forge. I can put my steel in the fire, step away, talk, and the only issue is the steel might oxidize a little bit, and that's not a big deal, right? So, it's not gonna burn, it's not going anywhere, it's not gonna to get too hot, it's gonna heat up, don't have to worry about it, plug and play, turn that bad boy on, light the forge, and we can focus on what's going on the anvil. Like I've said before on this show, guys, I wanna let technology allow us to perform better at the things that we can only do. Now, the only technology that can do this freehand, open die forging, hitting at all sorts of weird angles, is the human body, which is an incredible tool. Now, there is technology that allows us to put a piece of steel in a fire, step back and start working. I want to make the most of that technology and focus on what is not redundant. What is not redundant is what we're doing at the anvil. Even better than a, uh, than a gas forge, um, in my opinion. Well, yeah, I mean, induction forge for a lot of things. For this small stuff, my goodness, using an induction forge would be lovely. Okay, so I've got that laid out. 
Give it a little brush. Okie dokie. I have a punch somewhere. Oh, somewhere. Over the rainbow, way up high, is a punch. And it's right here. So let's see if I can line this up how it needs to be. Ah, uh, it's awfully tricky. I'm trying to leave about kind of three sixteenths to a, an eighth of an inch around the edge. I'm just kind of keep my fingers crossed that this all lines up. You can see this glove right here. Have a look at that glove. Let's go ahead and zoom in. This is the problem with being a blacksmith, is this glove started out here and that has all burnt away, which is a problem because it burnt, and when that burns, that burns you. It's also a problem because then the radiant heat is no longer stopped by the glove. Uh, so I'm gonna, you know, you, you basically get yourself a new pair of gloves once in a while. I, I have been known to buy like the expensive Kevlar, fancy gloves in the past and I can certainly say that I loved them. It's awesome being able to work in those great gloves. They protect against the heat amazingly but they're pretty expensive and what I loved about them was not really worth the effort of trying to source them and the extra cost. And so now, you know, these gloves are like a pound fifty uh, at the local health and safety supply. You know, it's like two dollars. It's ridiculously cheap for a pair of them, so I just go ahead and run in and get a pair of these rigger gloves, and, uh, and they do fine, you know. They, they, you know, students use them, if they accidentally walk away with them, no big deal. You know, if they accidentally get left in the fire, that hasn't happened yet, it's not a big deal at all, you know. So, cheap gloves, does the job just fine. Just make sure there isn't any synthetic stuff inside. Chuck Lozier, I'm thrilled that you are new to blacksmithing, and I'm even more thrilled that you're enjoying the show. Thank you so much, so much for being here. Great to see you, James. Right, let's do a little more forging. How many shares do we have on the stream, Sam? Twenty-nine shares, and how many viewers? I'm sorry, I did not. Eighty-two. Come on, guys. There are eighty-two of you watching this, and only twenty-nine of you have shared it. Same on YouTube. Guys, go ahead and head over to that Facebook page. Hit this video and please, please go ahead and share it. Share this with your friends. Share this in your favorite Facebook blacksmithing groups. Let's get as many people watching as possible. 29 of you, come on guys, you can do better than that. I don't have to, like seriously, I have to give you guys free stuff to get you to share these videos. You can do it out of the warmth of your own heart. Help support the show. Help get as many people interested in blacksmithing. Let's do this, guys. Go ahead and hit share. You know, go ahead and hit share. Hit share in a group, share in a Facebook group, share on your own timeline, do whatever. Let's just get this out there, guys. Especially as this door handle project comes together and we get something that's beginning to look quite interesting. Have I guilt tripped you into sharing yet? Come on now, you can do it. I'm gonna fix my microphone cable. Are they referring to what the GoPro color looks like, Sam? Are they referring to what the GoPro color looks like? Or the steel color? The, the color on the GoPro is edited. Um, as this comes into our, uh, into our software, what I have gone ahead and done is I have adjusted the colors because the GoPro gives a relatively flat image. Um, unless you're like outside in natural light with a lot of light, doesn't kind of seem to perform so well, and this is the top spec one. Um, so I have adjusted the color, reduced the gamma, increased the contrast, reduced the brightness, increased the saturation, uh, just to give you a little more kind of pop. And still, you can see, you know, it's a touch on the flat side. Um, it doesn't quite have the same beautiful, beautiful aesthetic that those DSLR bridge cameras that you guys have on the other angles will give. Okay, let's forge again.
Nice. Oh, my mole fillers all the way down there. Forge, drive, drive, drive. One last round of forging. Fantastic. Brilliant. So there, that's forged. I'm gonna go ahead and hit around the corners there. A little tough to do since it's very difficult to support that. And I'm gonna lay out for next heat where I'm gonna punch this with that smaller punch. And a forge, lay it out, and take another heat. And just my microphone. Sorry about that, guys, if you're getting a little, uh, little scratching there. There we go, that should be better. What's going on on YouTube, guys? How are you all doing? Aaron Schultz asks, what's my favorite brand of anvil? My favorite brand of anvil is the one that doesn't move. Um, I like, a, I like a narrow anvil and I like an anvil that's like right in front of me and ready for me to forge steel on and mounted well. I generally don't get too caught up in anvil brands as I've discussed previously on the show. I think that that's basically a waste of time, um, basically just kind of talking about stuff rather than doing stuff. The important stuff here is taking the hot piece of steel and hitting it. You know, what you need is you need a flat surface that's mounted securely, ideally, and you want to have, you know, some radius edges and some sharp edges. And yeah, maybe you want to have some different radii such as the horn to work over. It doesn't have to really be too complex. These die anvils, um, you can see just the corner of one over here. I forge on one extremely regularly and I can do plenty of work on a die anvil. It's a block of mild steel. When I'm working on these things, the reason for it is I want to show people that forging is way simpler and way less hassle and way less infrastructure. It's, it's, it's a, probably a hobby or a process or a profession that requires way less infrastructure than we ever think. And that's why I forge on a mild steel anvil a lot of the time a mild steel anvil that costs like a ridiculously small amount of money um, because yeah let's not get bogged down in this stuff let's get bogged down in the important stuff the important stuff is how we're using a hammer how we're using the tools how we're making using and maintaining the tools how we're progressing through our skill set and the anvil itself for most of the tasks that we do simply needs to be a block of steel like this with two radius edges you know it's that simple, guys. Let's keep it this simple. But obviously that wasn't an answer to, answer to your question about what anvil brand do I prefer. Uh, basically, yeah, I don't have an answer to the question. It's, I, I, I don't really mind too much. I have a little bit of a preference for a London pattern but that might well just be like an emotional response to the fact that my first anvil was a London pattern. I certainly see no real rationality in why it is that I would prefer a London pattern anvil as opposed to, you know, say a German pattern anvil. So, yeah, you know, use what you got. Make sure it's got flat surface, nice edges. It can be mild steel, you know. Just start, start working, start making stuff. That's the important point. Let's stop, you know, filibustering about what anvil we use and start focusing on how it is that we're forging. Let's start focusing on the things that we make. Let's start focusing on, you know, connecting with other blacksmiths, learning from them, teaching other blacksmiths. You know, that's the important stuff, not what anvil we're using. I mean, come on, guys. I hate to be the bearer of that news because it's so easy, so nice to talk about what equipment we're using rather than, like, actually doing it. You know, let's do this stuff. Let's forget about talking about the equipment so much. Hundred and eleven on Facebook. I love you guys. That is fantastic. Are there hundred and eleven shares yet? Come on now, guys. Come on now, guys. Let's keep sharing this bad boy. Let's keep sharing it. And also, if you have just joined this stream, I have a YouTube channel. I'm gonna go ahead and post that in the comments. Right, 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 right now. I post awesomely regular amounts of videos. I try my absolute best to make the best videos I can. I work a ridiculous amount to try and make that happen. Please subscribe. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Sam, what are you wanting me to... You want to show the setup, what we got going on? Okay, we'll do that. Uh, Lewis, the way you share this, 
is you hit share and then at the top of the share page it should say share on your profile, you hit that and then you can generally kind of scroll down and see share in a group, share on a page you manage, these are the kind of things, that's how you share it. Yes, Daniel Pierce, let's just <laughs> move the hot metal and enjoy, let's not focus on the anvil type. Let's, I like it, I like it guys, I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, uh, <laughs> talking about moving the hot metal, I'm sure I was meant to be doing something on this piece of steel before I put it in the fire um, with absolute disregard as to what my next step was. You know, here's something that I'd sincerely recommend, guys. Have a plan uh, every time you put that piece of steel in the fire and try and stick to it. You know, let's stick to our plans, let's work a plan. It's always gonna be much, much easier. The reason I'm saying that is because right now I have no plan. I just took this piece of steel out of the fire and I have no clue what I'm gonna do to it. And so you see I've wasted all of this temperature deciding what I was going to do to the piece of steel as opposed to actually doing it. And a plan, you know, okay, I'm going to go ahead and be easy on myself. I, yeah, I get it. It's, it's, I, I'm, I'm doing this thing live, me making a plan, I'll be easy on myself. It's, it's a little unrealistic for me to make a plan at every heat as to what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and planish that thing and, uh, and work out what the next step is. And I will take a little short two second pause to look at this at the end of this heat and evaluate, decide and work out what the next course of action will be. Okay, let's go ahead and show you guys what this is looking like so far. Okay, there we go. So that is what it is looking like so far. Jacob Farm inspiration, Brian Brazil inspiration, of course, you know, some of the people whose hand forging work is something that I hugely, hugely admire. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and put our bends in it. So the first bends, I'm gonna go ahead and do them in the vise, and the rest I'll be able to do over the horn. So I'm gonna get a little short heat there. Um, Roland, I believe I have a wooden mallet somewhere in the vicinity of that workstation. Can I also ask you one more favor, which is, Could you please, it would be wonderful of you. Thank you so much, Roland, I really appreciate it. Great, great guys, love your comments. I'm really enjoying seeing this, guys, okay. Thank you so much, Roland. Oh my goodness, I really appreciate it. Yes, yes, let me set that up. Thanks, Sam. Okay, hang on, Ooh. is it going? If you hit configure, are we working? There we go, let's switch that over. Let's show you guys what's going on behind the scenes. Look at Sam, give us a wave, Sam. Hello, here's Roland. Hey, yeah, I can go and grab that right now. Thank you so much. There's the mallet that we're talking about. We have one camera, two camera, three camera up there. Here's the anvil. Here's the forge. There's your little behind the scenes tour. Guys, of course, it is great to have you here. Ah, oh, this is exciting. So we switch back over. So yeah, guys, if you're not following me on YouTube, I don't know, what, I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, I don't know why that's the case. I'm very sad. What have I done? You need to follow me on YouTube. Subscribe. Um, I think it's going to be a great decision. Please, please go and do that. I would sincerely appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going to lock that in the vise. And make a little short bend here. Okay. Yeah, trying to be nice and gentle. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around and do the same, woo, same thing on the other side. Yes, Sam does have a chair. He has a spinny office chair and, uh, and he's, he's really rocking that thing. Sorry? 
there's a chair with a cushion in there, Sam, you know. Golly. <laughs> it is certainly an upgrade from that box, that, uh, that pallet that you were sitting on the other week. I ended up just throwing that in that pile of junk outside that, uh, that is in front of the workshop. Hey, Nath, yeah, we'd love to have you here on a Saturday night show. Nath Ooh, you're always welcome working with Iron. Go check out his YouTube channel, he does great stuff. Great stuff. Uh, what's going on, Facebook? Yes, Nick, this is the, the, the Slovakian, young Slovakian gentleman here. Roland, he's, uh, sorry? Sure. Yes, it's not Slovenia, it's Slovakia. Uh, kind of running joke if you've, been, uh, if you've been following the YouTube channel. He's Slo <laughs> Slovakia, not Slovenian. Oh my goodness, I'm so uncultured and so ungeographically aware, I apologize. Let me turn that damn thing off. Um, he's been here for a four day class. This is end of day four, we've been working all day. Uh, doing some hand forging projects. What else did we work on? Hot cut hardy. We made a flatter today. We also made a top hot cut that you directed expertly. Um, and yeah, we've been we've been working all day. And and, and he's here hanging out because your plane is tomorrow. And so we got a little more time. He's here helping out, hanging out, and helping man the camera. You can wave in front of the camera. Wave your hand out here. There's Sam. There's Roland. Guys, great to have you here. Okay, get a similar kind of angle going on there. Oh, I'm breaking things. Try not to throw a mallet at the laptop that's, that's right there. Make sure that's nice and square. Okay, now we're gonna to proceed to doing the other bends here. Hopefully we've got enough of a bend here. Door handles is not something that I do very often, so this is always quite exciting. None of this stuff is stuff that I do very often. That's just the really exciting stuff about these live streams. Show some really original content. Um, certainly for me, at least. Okay. Jesse Stanford, I've been forging for seven years now, which is awesome. A lot of, and just a wonderful thing to, uh, to, to, to know. What's going on? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll try and dodge my head as he, as he pans up. Still waiting, there we go. Awesome. So this here is what we made on, what was it, week two? I think it was week two. Week two of the live show. This is a candle holder, and we left the candle on there for too long. But it's wall mounted and just a very interesting kind of little, little exercise. If we pan right across, we can see what we made on, what we made on week one, episode one, season one of the live show. Here is the, this was exciting, this pivoting hook. Um, this was one of the projects that we made on episode three, I believe. And that was exciting because there were many failures. And here, this heart hook is what we made on episode four. So if you're not subscribed, if you haven't liked the Facebook page, that's what you're missing out on, guys. So remember, go to YouTube, hit subscribe, and, uh, and yeah, feel free to kind of binge watch all of that stuff. It's, 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 it's kind of cool. Okay, so I'm going to cool this end off. And I'm going to hold the red there. And I'm going to cool that end off. And I'm going to go ahead and just be quiet for a second as I try and figure this out a little bit. Purely because this is something I'm a little less experienced in. 
I want to try and get a shape that's going to work. Using the wooden mallet for a little more kind of precision and to avoid kind of dinging it. You know, I could be in here and ding it if I had a steel hammer. Wooden mallet, not going to do any harm whatsoever. Flip her around. And you can see very suddenly we begin to have what looks certainly much more like a door handle. See, we've got enough thickness there for the hand. Hit that down, there we go. Have you shared this stream? Have you subscribed to my YouTube channel? Come on now, guys. Do I really have to give away stuff to get you to share this stuff? Now you, you can do that out of the goodness of your own hearts because you are wonderful people and I'm gonna guilt trip you into doing that because again, you're wonderful people. Okay, how are we looking? Yeah. Little tweak. Okay, and right, let's go ahead and wire brush this. Here's something I sincerely recommend. Get yourself a proper brush. Don't mess around, guys. Pay the money, get this brush. Farrier's Block Brush, it is one of the best investments you will make. You know, I, like I said, I'm not gonna get caught up in what anvil to use. I will get caught up in the fact that the anvil has to be flat and it has to have the edges. I'm not gonna get caught up in what brand of block brush you use. Just make sure you get one that looks like this because no other brush performs as well. It has these flat spring steel bristles. You can pick them up from Farrier Supply Houses and they're extremely aggressive and essential for cleaning your work to any reasonable degree. So yeah, get yourself a Farrier's block brush if you want to keep your steel clean. Let's make sure it's square. So now I'm going to lay it there. And we're going to take this and simply a little rapid blow. Switch it around. Hold it upright how I think. Fantastic. Great. Now, how's the best way I can show it? I'm going to turn off the forge. And I'm going to take that and that. There we go. And there you can see we have the Jacob Farm. How can I hold that better for you? Jacob Farm, Brian Brazil inspired door pull, which was a lot of fun to make and exciting to use some different kind of techniques. Um, what, what fun, you know, always an exciting adventure to do this in front of you guys. Always a wonderful experience to have your communication and to experience chatting with you and, and seeing how you're all doing and learning about how you're enjoying this stuff. Again, I really want to make sure that you, you Go subscribe to the YouTube channel, guys. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Seriously. What are you, what are you looking for? Yeah, man, what are you awesome. Thank you, Sam. Woo. I dropped it. It's all good, guys. You didn't see that, right? Thanks, Sam. That's very, very kind of you. Now that it's still warm, we can go ahead and apply a hot oil finish. And let's, let's, let's see what the final kind of comments are of the day, Sam, as we wrap this up, as we come into the final penultimate minute or two of this stream. Can I just add something? How sad it makes me every time that like, oh, I dropped my oily rag. Every time that we begin to get close to the end of one of these things, because I kind of want to keep going. Uh, but you guys have things to do, and we want things to show 
next week. Remember, we do this every week, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. Pacific Time, um, and that is 10 p.m. Um, here in the United Kingdom, and we're trying to make it as enjoyable as possible. And next month, the theme is up to you to decide, and I want you to decide now. Please, in the comments section, leave your suggestions again as to what you want to see next month, what the theme next month should be as we begin that next weekend. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go and do that. You can find that. I'm gonna go ahead and paste the link in Facebook if you're not subscribed right now. Here you go, boom, 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 boom. Go subscribe and watch those videos. I really hope you enjoy them. Leave your comments. Let me know what you wanna see next. Let me know how you like the editing style, the filming style, that kind of, I dropped my tongs. Gravity, eh, you know? What a pain. Never works to your advantage. <laughs> Let me know what you guys want to see. Comment what you think next month's series should be. And of course, I do also want to add, uh, in case you're not aware, you know, these nice tools that I'm using, you know, nice hammers and stuff like that. Um, yeah, you know, you can pre-order your hammers. Pre-ordering of hammers is open for a limited time. Um, I'm going to be doing a run of hammers in the last week of August and if you pre-order you get to the head of the list and you make sure that your hammer gets to be made in that week otherwise you're going to have to wait a while because I'm very busy teaching classes uh, which is extraordinarily exciting on the one hand and sad on the other that I don't quite have the opportunity to quite make as many hammers for you guys as you want but we're solving that with a pre-order and you can solve the solution of your missing hand forged rounding hammer. Um, by going to blacksmithingtools.co.uk, solve that solution and pre-order that hammer and uh, we'll be shipping those out in the first kind of week or two of September there um, for you guys to receive. And I just want to add, you'd be amazed at how cheap shipping to the US is. Uh, it's, it's pretty damn cheap. Right now, the shipping cost to the US in US dollars, and depending on what the con conversion rate is right now, with the pound being you know, pretty, pretty weak, we're probably talking about between 20 and $25 to ship a parcel to the US. I've shipped parcels while in the US and it's costed me $18. So what are you talking about? You're talking about $7 to get a hammer and ship it all the way out to the US, $7 extra. Come on, that's ridiculous. Let's not, let's not, uh, let's not say that that's expensive. So go ahead and grab your hammers at blacksmithingtools.co.uk, pre-order those. And of course, if you wanna learn more blacksmithing, please do head over to beginblacksmithing.com and um, got a plethora of online courses there, more to come. The Brian Brazil course is going to get published extraordinarily soon. Um, we've got courses in... 20% off as well. 20% off? Is it up? I know. Oh, is it up? <laughs> we've got a 20% off coupon code. If you use coupon LIVE20, LIVE20 will give you 20% off all online courses. And I would love for you to make the most of that. I'd uh, love for you to kind of help further your blacksmithing, your blacksmithing hobby and your path to um, you know, more, more fulfillment and success at the Anvil. I would like to be a part of helping that. If you found this live stream helpful and you want to learn more in a more educational format, that is the place to go. And that is beginblacksmithing.com, coupon code LIVE20. And that's all extremely exciting. This piece needs a little final kind of wire brush with a finer wire brush. For now, guys, I'll go ahead and leave you. I'll go ahead and hit that. I'll leave you with a final image of her as she looks. You know, I would then usually as this cools down, the oil that has gummed up in certain places, it's a little bit of a dirty rag. Um, we'd go ahead and pick that off, but I'll go ahead and leave you, if you zoom out, if you just pull that, if you zoom out the other direction. There we go. <laughs> I'll leave you with that image of the Farum slash Brazil inspired door handle. And we're gonna go ahead and throw that up on the wall here in just a second. Uh, I want to say it's been a pleasure having you here. We're going to be here every single Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you haven't, of course, the link is right here. I want you all to extend a special thanks to Sam and a special thanks to... What's happened again? You've got to say it louder. Roland. Roland. Why would I keep forgetting that? I keep thinking Ronald. Why would I think Ronald? Like what a terrible! I know for three whole days. Well, it was it was like it was it was literally four days. I did not forget. I've said your name hundreds of times. What's wrong with me, Roland? I'm I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, guys. Please forgive me. Please extend a special thanks 
to my dear friends Sam and Roland for helping out with the stream, manning the cameras, manning the software so expertly. It's a pleasure. It's always been a pleasure. And guys, until next week and until tomorrow, you're going to want to subscribe to my YouTube channel because tomorrow's video of day three of Roland's class is amazing. Go subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and post that link again. Subscribe to that if you're on Facebook. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Have a lovely, lovely day. My name's Alex Steele. It's been a pleasure. Sam, wave at the camera, say thank you. Woo! Roland, wave at the camera, say thank you. Woohoo! Guys, have a lovely day. Bye bye.